Topping today's news, the education minister questions the efficacy of the BGCSE exams and the BJC exams, both being sat this week. The Minister of Health speaks at the 77th World Health Assembly and a man wanted for murder captured while a former police officer is now wanted by police after breaching his bail conditions. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It's a pleasure to have you join us. National examinations are underway across the country with students prepared to sit the BGCSE and the BJC exams this week. But Education Minister Glennis Hannah Martin is calling into question the efficacy of those exams, saying they may not be the best system to evaluate Bahamian students. You have to see, they've been historically and traditionally um, uh, I would say uh, performance which uh, causes some concern in the public domain. I don't know um, what change we will see. I hope we do see improvement um, moving forward. Uh, but I think that at some point we have to um, look at these examinations and to um, critically analyze them to see whether um, this is a, um, a precise measurement of students, because this, it's, this is what it has become. And so everyone says that the D average, and which sort of um, stigmatizes the student. Minister Hannah Martin revealed Monday that education officials have for years seen the need to reform the standardized written and practical examinations. She believes the Bahamas should take a more progressive approach while working with the current system. I believe in the uh, in the British um, post-colonial uh, societies, we're the only ones doing these types of exams. Other jurisdictions do continuous evaluations and monitoring, which I think are more progressive and which allow for a more holistic um, assessment of students. But in the meantime, it is what it is, and we're doing our best to ensure that students prepare themselves for these exams. And then as we move forward, we will see what... Um, what sort of reforms are necessary to ensure that students are properly and fully assessed in their um, scholastic journeys. Meanwhile, President of the Bahamas Union of Teachers, Belinda Wilson, said the union has continuously recommended a change in the country's standardized tests. Wilson is calling for immediate reform to ensure the country has an accurate evaluation of its education system. The 77th World Health Assembly brings together ministers of health from around the world to discuss critical global health challenges. Today in Geneva, Switzerland, the Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Michael Darvill, had three minutes to address the assembly. He first spoke of the challenges the government of the Bahamas faces having to duplicate health care facilities on the various family islands. He said while there has been much recovery following recent natural disasters and the COVID-19 pandemic, the government recognizes the need for universal health care to protect its citizens. The mental, social, and economic fallout left in the wake of these devastating national disasters reinforced my country's commitment to WHO's agenda to promote economic recovery and revitalize healthcare delivery systems through universal healthcare coverage. Our journey towards universal healthcare coverage began a decade ago with the launch of universal primary healthcare coverage, and I am pleased to report that we are well on our way for meeting WHO's goal for universal health coverage before 2030 by way of national health insurance. Dr. Darwell spoke of major infrastructural upgrades to the Bahamas healthcare system over the past 24 months, including climate resilient medical facilities, training for healthcare workers, and new health care legislation. We are also modernizing our existing health care legislation and recently enacted new progressive mental health legislation aimed at modernizing health care protocols, improving access to quality psychological and psychiatric services while protecting the constitutional rights of patients suffering from mental health challenges. Mr. President, Given the high socioeconomic costs associated with NCDs, we have launched a wellness unit and implemented a number of physical and nutritional programs that we expect will have us better health outcomes across the country. Finally, 
While we strive to improve and upgrade our health delivery systems, we remain very vulnerable to destruction brought on by climate change, which places us in a repetitive pattern of borrowing to repair and rebuild our healthcare infrastructure after each hurricane. Reducing carbon footprints is therefore critical for healthcare delivery in small island development states like ours. Meanwhile, Dr. Gina Archer, chief pharmacist here in the country, she's uh, working at the Ministry of Health and Wellness. She also addressed the 77th World Health Assembly. That was on Monday. She spoke on a resolution for developing the 14th General Program of Work for 2025 to 2028, which sets out an ambitious four-year agenda for global health in the face of challenges like migration, aging, geopolitics, and advancing science and technology. She told the Assembly that the Bahamas and the CARICOM region appreciates the work that is being done. We believe that the draft, along with the results narrative and framework, are necessarily strong and ambitious, as we recognize the complex nature of promoting, providing, and protecting health and well-being in the 21st century. The Bahamas acknowledges the intentionality of the Secretariat to incorporate document scanning of CARICOM's specific priorities, mandates, and strategies as outlined in the CCHIV and the outcomes of the Fourth International Conference on Small Island Developing States, among others. However, Dr. Archer made it clear that CARICOM desires more meaningful engagement and to have a greater involvement in the decision-making process, particularly on issues that impact CARICOM regions. Madam Chair, there must be a way to sustainably engage a greater proportion of member states in the CARICOM region in these important direction-setting consultations. As we sit in this assembly, we face varied realities. The reality is not that all member states have mission representation in Geneva, and where representation may exist for small island states, including the CARICOM community, there are often limited human resource capacities, not to mention the time zone reality, among others. The Bahamas calls for strengthened consultative mechanisms for the Caribbean subregion of the Americas and further propose that the metric of success for future consultations be revisited to include regional and sub-regional thresholds. The Bahamas went on to support the resolution. Dr. Archer is part of a delegation led by the Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Michael Davo, and Director of the Public Hospitals Authority, Dr. Aubinette Roll, is also in Switzerland. Commercial vehicle operators were given a one-year grace period to retain a commercial driver's license in order to be in compliance with the new road traffic laws for commercial vehicles. That grace period has now expired, and it is imperative that those operating various size commercial vehicles that you are in possession of both your personal driver's license and your commercial driver's license. You can obtain your Class A, B, or C commercial driver's license from the Motor Vehicle Training School on Claridge Road. Chief Superintendent of Police Eugene Strawn says a safer Bahamas starts with proper road safety and training for those handling large commercial vehicles. Again, we were exposed to new development as it relates to road traffic amendments, one of those being that of the commercial driver's license, and then more importantly, that of insurance. And the reason why I'm here is because one of our, at least our mission is to create safer Bahamas. And a part of safer Bahamas uh, commitment comes to road traffic safety. President of the Motor Vehicle Training School, Ethlyn Davis, says the training courses enhances the credibility of commercial drivers as skilled professionals and not just ordinary truck drivers. Each industry has specialized professionals. CDL is one of those industries. And so our drivers are they're skilled, very skilled, especially uh, maneuvering our tight roads in the Bahamas. So we want to give them the um, credence with the license to show that their abilities have been recognized. And there have been a group of underprivileged, underserved, uh, overlooked individuals. People look at truckers as those that do not have much skill, much education in the Bahamas because a number of them, a parent has taught them, a grandparent, 
uh, an uncle, a friend, but they're very skilled individuals. And so a CDL right now allows them to have you know, acceptance. They can show that license to show that they are commercial drivers. Anywhere around the world, commercial drivers are well respected. Police Chief Superintendent Eugene Strawn from the Traffic Division says, if you are a commercial truck driver and you are pulled over without your commercial driver's license, even if you have your personal license, you will still face a $250 traffic fine. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.